Hey everybody, Jason here. I'm out in my garage, it's pretty late, but I've got the lights on. I got something behind me that I've really been starting to play around with and have some fun with, and I'll give you a close-up view. But I guess, uh, let me see if I can get out of the way here. Well, I guess you can see over here that I've got the control box and the, and the computer running. And then behind me, you have my actual CNC machine. Now, this is actually, just a, it's called a 6040 CNC. Um, it's a, a, roughly a 600 millimeter long bed by a 400 millimeter wide bed. And it's got about two and a half inches, three inches of Z axis travel. It's really more of a router than it is a milling machine. But uh, as you'll see here in a few minutes, I have had some success uh, cutting aluminum, which is about the hardest material you really should machine with it. You might be able to do some brass if you're careful and your feeds and speeds are right you have no business cutting steel on a machine like this. It's really more of a router. It's really more for engraving and plastics and hardwoods and, and soft metals. You know, this happens to be 60-61 T6 aluminum, so it will cut that. But uh, this is something that I've really wanted for a long time because I think the potential is really unlimited. There's so much that we can do, especially in the RC world. You know, we can create all kinds of just anything. In fact, a lot of people don't, you may or may not know this, but a lot of the companies that create carbon fiber products for RC cars use a tool just like this. Uh, they clamp down the carbon fiber and then they just cut out, you know, groups of uh, parts. Now, at this point in time, I've considered, you know, making all kinds of cool parts and, you know, selling them, but that's really not what this is all about. This is really just more for fun. This is, uh, this is about making cool parts for your cars that you can't get anywhere else. For a long time, I wanted to do a uh, B4, an aluminum chassis for a B4, kind of like the RB6 with like some nice Delrin side rails and stuff like that. So I still may do that as a project because I thought it would be fun. Obviously the B5 is, it's just weeks from being released. So there's, there's no real market value in it. Just something I've always wanted to do. I've always uh, kind of had an interest in robots. So maybe I'll play with that. And uh, I know there are a lot of cars out there. I actually had a Techno e-buggy and I've heard through the grapevine that you may need uh, shock towers that aren't quite as tall to run Kyosho shocks. And uh, I really liked my Techno buggy. Um, I didn't care for the shocks that much, although I know that the new ones have been updated, but let's just be honest, Kyosho shocks are probably the, the best eight scale shocks on the planet. So maybe I'll get another Techno e-buggy and uh, make cut out some of my own custom carbon fiber shock towers so I can run Kyosho shocks. So anyways, I just thought I'd show this to you real quick. So come on in for a closer look and I'll show you how this thing works. All right, well, here we are. This is the CNC machine. You can see that I've already cut, up, cut some aluminum stuff playing around on it. I thought I'd give you a closer look and show you a little bit uh, more about how it works. Right, what you have here is a control box. This controls the, uh, the stepper motors in the CNC. There's a switch for the water pump and then a spindle control switch. When you turn that on, it'll power up here in just a little bit. Sometimes it takes a few minutes. Um, but while the uh, spindles well, I guess the spindle's now powered up. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But basically all you do is you just hit run, and then you can set the frequency, and that's, it'll go up to about 25,000 RPMs. And it's just that simple. But obviously we don't need to be running this for now. So we'll just hit stop. So I'm sure you've seen one of these before, the good old fashioned Xbox controller. I, uh, the software that actually runs the CNC, which Actually, you probably can see a little bit. This is called Mach 3. And uh, Mach 3 is a program uh, that basically, it's, it's pretty much the standard for these smaller uh, hobby sized uh, CNC routers and milling machines and stuff like that. And this just controls, it controls the CNC by using the keyboard. And, uh, but what's cool is that the company that makes Mach 3 actually has a driver where you can connect up this. And so you can drive the CNC around with the Xbox controller, which is pretty cool. And uh, I guess if you really wanted to, I've actually played around and I've actually milled some stuff like some pieces of wood and some foam blocks and stuff like that. Uh, so if you really just wanted to cut something real quick and you had it mounted up, you could actually just fire up the spindle, set, you know, use, use your depth here, and then just go ahead and mill whatever you wanted to. It's really not the right way to do it. This the you know the machine's designed to be ran on a you know on a CNC program on a you know with G code. Uh, the, the 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 mechanics of this machine are really pretty easy. It's really the software is really where the steep learning curve tends to be. 
So this is a pretty cool little tool. Let's see if we can get this thing to slide out a little bit. This is actually a, a Z-axis. It's a gauge for setting the Z-axis. And what you do is you put it on here. You clip this onto here. So the, this is slippier in here. So you, well actually I'll show how it works. Basically you clip this onto here. You bring the CNC over this and then you run a program in Mach 3. And when this thing comes down and it actually touches the contact, I already, I've already used a caliper on this, this tool. This is 19 and a half millimeters exactly. So that's all programmed into Mach 3. So when I come down, when I hit go to calibrate the depth for the Z axis, it comes down, it touches right there, and it knows that the spindle is exactly 19 and a half millimeters from the work surface. So overall, pretty cool machine. If I had to do it over again, I'm not sure if I would have chose this or if I would have went with like one of the Grizzly updated mills where it's really more of an actual milling machine, but uh, very cool. Uh, a lot of opportunity and I look forward to making some cool stuff and if you guys have ideas for RC car parts and stuff maybe we can whip up some some cool parts you know who knows anyways I appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to watch this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one take it easy